Hello. Hi. It's uh, Jill Lancet, uh, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Australia. And let me just tell you, um, yeah, I haven't made a video for a couple of weeks. We we went away uh, to Port Macquarie, beautiful place on the far north coast of New South Wales. Um, and uh, we had a little bit of a break. And <laughs> since I've come back, I've been exhausted. So that worked well, didn't it? Um, anyway, I've got two cards for you. They're kind of so sort of similar. And I'm calling them uh, faux watercolour. Um, it's watercolour month in July here uh, at Stampin' Up. I think it must be everywhere. I don't know. In the art world, somebody probably made it up. But anyway, um, <clears throat> this is what I'm calling faux watercolouring. I will probably do an another few uh, watercoloured uh, examples. But the things that we're using tonight are from the annual catalogue. Now, I just wanted to show you a little secret regarding the annual catalogue and I think it's also in the mini catalogue. When you get your catalogue and if you want one please contact me and let me know um, and I'll get one out to you as soon as I can. Um, but I've just opened this up at a random page okay. Um, actually I'll open it up at the page that I intended it to be opened at. Um, so when you get your catalogue you can see there are some lovely examples of cards uh, using this particular stamp set and each page will do that for you but you get a bonus one if you turn to the back of the catalogue and I've got it marked here And I don't know if everybody else noticed this, but I felt quite like I'd just discovered the secret of life. Um, so this is the stamp set and the, the collection and all the rest of it. But if you look up the index, it will tell you uh, where the bundles are. And when you go to the bundle, they give you a bonus card. See, that card is using that stamp and die set but it's not featured on the pages. And if you look at all of them, it's the same thing. So you get a secret bonus card. Anyway, wanted to share that with you. I felt quite chuffed that I thought I discovered it. Probably quite planned. Um, but anyway, tonight we're going to make two cards and um, I've got all the stuff here. I wanna go through the catalog and just show you what items we're using. So the first thing is, um, I think it's this beautiful, beautiful paper. Um, this perfectly penciled and I've got it here. It's 12 by 12, sorry. If you could see my craft room, um, the description would be, seems to have been a struggle because it's in an absolute state of uproar. Um, look at these beautiful papers. Now, as I said, they're 12 by 12, so you're going to get some beautiful, um, you're going to get a beautiful lot of cards out of these. And they're just all black and white. Now, these have got designs on one side. Now you can leave them black and white or you can colour them and that's what we're going to do tonight. Now I have featured some of these on my Facebook page. Um, if you can go to my Facebook page, uh, you will see some of these here. Now the back side are just more like background as well, but different black and white. So I can see heaps heaps and heaps of opportunities of cards here um, but anyway they're the they're the papers and we're just using one design tonight I'm making both cards out of the same design and um, so that's what that paper is it's called perfectly penciled um, now they're $21 you get 12 sheets of double-sided so you get two of each two of each design and then of course you've got the other designs on the back as well so yeah really good value I mean I think you know people go oh but you only get two well 
we're using like like basically 10, cent 10 centimeters of this paper tonight and I've gotten two cards out of that so you'd get a lot of cards out of it as well um, now to go with that um, we're using in one card we're using the pencils uh, the watercolor pencils um, in, in another card we're in the other card we're using the ink pads and I'm going to show you how we've achieved this faux watercolor um, uh, I've, I'm using some of this um, I think it's this white seam uh, crinkled seam binding ribbon and I'm also using some of these um, Baker's twine in the new 2022-24 uh, uh, in colors that's the word I'm looking for in colors and we're going to be using um, an embossing folder for uh, one of them and it's going to be one of these ones here now these are two little mini embossing folders you get both of them in the set um, they are called elegant eucalyptus they're on page 176 and I just thought of something else that we were going to use and I can't think what I did with it hang on I think it's I think it's here somewhere no nope, you'll find it I'll tell you all about it anyway that's what we're doing tonight I don't want to hold you up um, I know everybody's busy. I've got a little bit of music playing. I hope Facebook has created all sorts of problems. So when I go to download this to Facebook, I hope I don't have any issues. Okay, now the first card, and as I said, they're both going to be quite similar um, in as far as what we're using tonight. Oh, we're also using these beautiful... Um, stylish shapes dies now this is the, the set you get uh, 15 dies in there uh, so you get these stitched circles and they stitch both sides now by that I mean not only do they stitch the piece that you cut out but they stitch the piece that is left behind so if you wanted to make a window you've also got this beautiful stitching on that aperture so they're the two that we're using today. There's squares, there's these beautiful banners, and there's the stitched circles. And they all do that same inside-outside stitching. That's what I'm calling a technical term for that. Okay, so um, the first card, I have everything here, and I have done a lot of it for you already. Um, but I want to show you how I've created this. And I'm going to start with the colouring. Now this is that gorgeous paper and I've left it here because I want to show you how I coloured it. So what I did was I got the um, ink pads and this one is the Sweet Sorbet. So the reddish pinky colour is the Sweet Sorbet. And the green is the Parakeet Party. Now, these are both 2022-24 uh, 20, uh, in colours. Mm, I hope I'm in the camera there. Um, so what I've done is I've smooshed it. And yeah, that is the technical term. I've smooshed it onto the, to just a clear block. So you can see that. Just smooshed that onto the clear block. And I did the same with the Parakeet Party. Um, these are still a little bit tight because they're pretty brand new. Okay, so I'll put those away now. Um, now, the other thing I used is this blender pen. Now, you get three in a packet. Uh, I'm not sure what the current price is. Um, I'll try and look that up before we finish tonight. Um, my online store is here. This is my current, oh no, that's wrong. That's an old co host code. Don't take any notice of that. If you go to my uh, online store, the current host code is actually on the first page, the welcoming page. So don't look at that one. I told you, I'm still recovering from that holiday. Um, so what I did was, once I've inked up the blocks, 
I'll just turn this down a bit. These are great. Um, they're double-ended, so you get two brush-like. It's probably not a good idea to show you on blue on white, um, but they're like a, a brush. They're like a marker, and they've got some sort of blending um, fluid inside them. Now they're double-ended, so you can use both ends, and they're so simple to use. Now I don't have. I could have used blends on this. But it does, I wanted to give it that watercolour uh, look. Now, you'll see that the paper itself has already got some shading. Isn't that brilliant? Now, you could just leave that black and white if you wanted to, but we're going to do some faux watercolouring. So I'll just show you how I achieved that. I've done most of it because of time constraints. But I'm just picking that up and I'm just colouring that in. Now you can leave some bits white. You, you don't have to um, be perfect. This is a very sketchy sort of a drawing. And it, it was really quick. I did this the other day and just left it this far so I could finish it off for you. And I just went around. Now, I don't care what anybody says. Colouring in is very relaxing. And uh, there is mindful um, colouring. Uh, they sell books on that. Yeah, you, you colour in. But if you do this kind of mindful colouring, you actually end up with something at the end of it, a card. So you can send that out to friends or keep it in your little stash for when you need a card very, very quickly. So... I've coloured that in. I've coloured it in really roughly. Now you can see uh, these are a paler. That's because these have been left to dry. Now to clean that colour off there, all I do is just scribble until it's clear. And you can see no more colour. Now it is stained, but that's all. It's just stained. There's no more colour coming off that. So now I'm going to pick up the green and I'm going to do the leaves. Now, I really hope this is in camera because um, I don't want to have to do this again, <laughs> basically. Yeah, anyway, we went up to Port Macquarie. Um, our One of our friends has a holiday um, villa up there and we quite often go there. It's a beautiful area of northern New South Wales, if you're not sure where that is. And... Um, yeah, we we had our little granddaughter, um, obviously, and her mum and dad with us. And um, we did escape the rain for a couple of days. It was a couple of beautiful days. And we took our granddaughter, whose name is Elizabeth, but pretty much we just call her Libby. Um, yeah, my husband and I gave the parents the day off and we took it to this little zoo in uh, Port Macquarie called the Billabong Zoo. And I have to say, I was very impressed. It was a really nice little zoo. And uh, she had a ball, we had a ball. And um, I can highly recommend it. I did post a photograph on my Facebook page, uh, business Facebook page, if you want to have a look at that. Now, I've just cleaned the green off. Okay, now, make sure you seal those up and store them horizontally. Don't store them vertically because all the fluid will run to one end. Uh, so you want both of them, both ends to be primed and ready to go. Now I could have cleaned that one off and then if I was worried there was red still on it, I could have turned around and used the second end. But once you clean it off, it's no problem really. Um, so that's our colouring, that's, that's it. And it is very relaxing. Um, and it do, as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I'm not sure. I'm going to stand up and just give you a little look. Give that a second to adjust. And because the shading's already in it, oh, no brainer. All you have to do is just use one colour. So that's our colouring done. Now, I have cut out some stuff. I will show you how I managed to do that. I'm not going to um, run it through my die cutting machine again. 
Um, but all I did was I stamped with my tuxedo, um, memento tuxedo black. I stamped the uh, Beyond Grateful. And the Beyond Grateful comes from, hang on, where are we? From this really fabulous little set. And what it does is it's got all these um, really um, diverse sayings and then the dies actually cut them out like they're fussing cutting them. And we, the second card we're going to make, we're going to use this and I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's cut out. It does look like someone sat there and fussy cut it. But we're not fussy cutting this one. Um, I just wanted to make them the same but different. So basically the um, design is pretty much the same with a few differences to it. Now, where is my mat? I went ahead and got the uh, piercing mat. It is it is very dense. Um, so it's a really good sturdy mat and you can use it for paper piercing or stamping. So what I've done is I've just stamped this, mindful that there's going to be a circle around it. Okay, so place it with enough room so that that die will fit. Now I'm just not pressing too hard, but I'm holding that there so that that ink will soak in. And hopefully that's that's fine. So then what I did is I used this and it's like low tack reusable um, sticky tape. I just keep it on a sticky tape thingo, what do you call it, dispenser. Because I don't like it when it moves around. So I just centered that in and look how beautiful that fits in it fits in perfectly so that's all I did then I run that through my uh, die cutting machine and I ended up with this and as I said it cuts both the inside of the circle and the outside so you've got these two um, stitchings that you can use for either or so we'll pop that aside um, I also went ahead and cut out the larger of the two with the parrot what is it parakeet party gosh uh, and there you can see the inside and the outside again so we're going to use that bit this piece is also going to go on the card but you're not going to see that big hole. But it saves me from finding a scrap or cutting another piece when I can just do that because nobody's going to see it. So now we'll assemble that. Um, that's the design on the back if you're interested. Um, so we're going to, to uh, assemble this. Now the base is the sweet sorbet. Yeah, that's what it's called, sweet sorbet. Um, and we're just going to use some of this beautiful um, baker's twine and also that um, seam binding now I'm just I had it popped in here for the other the other card oh and the other thing that I was going to pop on this card was um, no I wasn't no I wasn't no sorry disorganized, holiday mode, all of that. Um, so yeah, just some of this beautiful, um, and it's very silky, it's very, very soft, and it's already crinkled up. Um, so yeah, with, this, with the baker's twine, I think that's gonna look really nice. Um, so what I decided to do was to pop this on, um, at an angle like that because I want to put the bow the bows on this end so we'll just put some adhesive on that oops helps if you take the lid off it so this is just our normal seal it's quick and easy to carry away with you like I just carried that away now just make sure you get this level because 
because the um, the writing is at is on there, you want it straight. So I'm, I'm doing it like oh, I remember the old sixties. They used to do things like that all the time. And then I'm going to glue this to this, and we're going to tuck that uh, ribbon and baker's twine under that as well. So I just go around the circle a bit. Just around the circle on here. Otherwise I'll have the glue going through the hole. And then I'll just put some, some on here. Some people don't like the, the, the glue runners, the tapes. Some days I have my moments with them. <laughs> Sometimes it's a love-hate relationship, but anyway, there's only a very, very, very small um, border. So I'll just go ahead and put that on. Just make sure it's straight before I pop it down. It's as good as it's gonna get. Right, now, this is what I mean. Because I put the adhesive around on the green card, there isn't any on the back here that's going to stick down and annoy me. So we're going to put the ribbon on. First, I want to see where I want to put this. So I want to put that about there. I want some ribbon going underneath here. Yep. So again, I'll just pop some of this on the back. I must clean this. If you're having troubles with this, it usually means it needs to be uh, de-stickified, de for want of a better word. So I'll just cut some ribbon and just pop that. Now look, about, about a third of the way down, it doesn't matter if it's not exactly a third. That's going to be just lovely, I think right about there. So I'm just tucking that under. Now I've got plenty of sticky, so I'm going to put the baker's twine on there as well. And I'm just going to zigzag this across. And it doesn't matter how it goes. As long as it's as long as it's attached at the back. So as you can see I've I've caught it into into our adhesive so it's it's there. Now I'm just going to glue that straight down. I'm going to use the liquid glue. Now the baker's twine isn't that um, deep so it'd probably be okay. Check your opening, yeah. I don't know how many times I've done that. Um, and just pop that on the card. Give that a few minutes to grab. Now, I did make a coffee before I came in because uh, that COVID hangs on and my throat gets really, really dry. So I'm just gonna have a sip, cheers. Mm. Very nice. Um, so now we've got that. Now I want to pop this up onto some dimensionals and I forgot to get some out. I hope I've got some, some handy. Yep, here we go. So I want to pop that up. I'm going to... Try and avoid oh, straight on it. I was just going to say I'm going to try and avoid that middle bit because that's where the baker's twine and the ribbon is. So yeah, try and avoid that area. Luckily, they come off. <laughs> Luckily, that's made for people like me. <laughs> so I'll just take the ends off, the backs off. I don't know where, I think my, 
take take your pick tool still packed from when I went away. I did make four cards while we were away and I did um, post those onto my business Facebook page. So if you're curious, you can go and have a look. So I'm just lining that up so that it's straight and I want a little bit of this poking out just to add a bit of interest. So there we go. Now I'm going to make a bow and oh, um, I'm going to use both of these. Now I'm usually pretty horrible at doing this but I might just try and do them all at the same time. So let's just see. Get about that long, that much. Now I've got two lengths of the baker's twine. And I'm doing this on the fly because I hadn't even really thought too much about this. So, yeah. Now I like to kind of do the rabbit ears, but it could be a bit tricky with these, um, all of these. But anyway, let's, let's give it a go. Oops, oops. You know about these nails, right? They're pretty hopeless in most cases. But anyway, there, I hope that was in camera shot because I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I'm very getting la lazy in my old age. <laughs> right. Okay. So we've kind of got a double kind of a bow happening there. So we'll just trim that off. Glue dots, where's the glue dots? Here they are, here's some glue dots. Now here's a little tip I picked up from uh, Connie Stewart. Any of the, you know when you buy a new blouse and you get these little pieces of ribbon that hold it on the coat hanger? I chopped them off because they're really, really skinny little pieces of ribbon. Now, I just, I've just wrapped that around and tied a bow. That sort of helps me to control these. Now, I do have this dispenser, which is not sold by Stampin' Up, but sometimes that's a bit of a pain. So this is what I took away with me. Um, so I'm going to put the glue dot, I mean, put the bow on the glue dot, so you can see it's stuck on there. Give it a bit of a rub from the back just to make sure it is all stuck on there and then peel that off and tuck any bits in that you might see so there's a little bit there I'm just going to tuck it in just roll it back and stick it onto itself and um, which way will I go that way yeah I think that looks okay so I'm actually sticking it directly onto the ribbon where the ribbon uh, lines up there now I thought that this was a bit plain so I thought I might just jazz it up with these glossy dots um, now they are also in the annual catalog um, did I show you what page they were on embellishments oh, here we go um, and they're these ones here these glossy dots now there's uh, four different colours, uh, Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mumbo, Daffodil Delight and Pool Party. Now I did colour, oh I didn't colour these ones, I didn't colour those ones, I think I just used this watercolour pencil to colour in the, the middle. This is what happens when you do half of it a few days ago. But anyway, I just thought it might just give it a lift. If I put some of these Daffodil Delight dots on around it. So I thought I'd put a couple in the centre of the flowers. So one there. One there. I don't want to go crazy and do them all. Um, but I just thought I'd do five. So I'll do those five flowers. Oh, see, where's my take your pick tool? Put that one in there. Put this one in there. 
and they're kind of the back of them is kind of mirrored so they give you this really weird but lovely 3d sort of look then I thought I'd put uh, a couple on the message itself so maybe one there a medium one and then a, a large one down here with oh, a small one. I always like to sort of put the small ones and the large ones together. Hmm. Now see, this is where I get mixed up. Done, before I change my mind. So that's our first card, faux water colouring. So remember, we just stamped some ink onto a clear block and picked it up with the uh, blending pen, the blender pen, okay, as opposed to our alcohol blenders, um, and just colour them in. Now, they will actually dry back lighter uh, to match those because I've done them exactly the same way. And uh, that means that I don't have to buy the, um, the new markers if I can't afford them. I can do it this way and it's the same. Now, the only the only tip I would give you is don't be scrubbing at that because your paper will actually start to peel. But as you can see, it's a beautiful smooth finish and it was just very, very quick and very relaxing. So that's card one. And uh, the second card is, is almost exactly the same, but I'm going to show you the differences right now. And then we'll have a look at them side by side. Okay, so the same thing applies. However, I used the watercolor pencils. Now, these are the Stampin' Up! watercolor pencils. Um, they're really nice to use. They're very, very soft. The ends are very, very soft. And um, you can actually use a water brush, which I don't have one here handy because I took it away. Um, or you can use the blender pen, and that's what we're going to use again, because we're, there's a bit of a theme happening here. So um, I'll just get all that stuff out of the way, and I'll show you what we did. So the first thing, again, was this beautiful paper. Now, I made it really quite different. Um, I coloured in the background, and then I used a blend, the Daffodil Delight blend to uh, create a spotted background, just just for some just for something different. Okay, so I'll just show you how I've done that again. Okay, so I used the Knight of Navy uh, watercolor pencil, and I've just basically coloured. Now, as I said, they're very very soft. And what I tried to do was get more colour down the bottom of the petal. And I mean, you can do this while you're watching TV because it's really not, it doesn't demand that much uh, concentration because, um, yeah, you don't have to be neat. So, yeah, you can just do colours, swirls. And that one there. Oh, gee, that was quick. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what I've done is I've just pressed a little bit heavier in the middle and then I'm going to use the blender brush again and I'm just going to move that colour. Now look, I hope you can see how easy this is to move this around, okay? And what it does is it just, it sort of like just melts the colour on contact and then spreads it out. And it gives it a very, very smooth, um, as opposed to just colouring it in, where you can sort of see the, the texture of the card underneath. This sort of smooths it out. And yeah, leave some bits white. Um, again, because it's a pretty sketchy drawing. Now, yeah, that's it. Clean that off. And... I did pumpkin pie for the inside, for there. And I used um, garden green for the leaves on this one. And again, just 
colouring in. I mean, you're going to get variation in the colour. Um, first of all, because it's already got some shading behind it. But when you move the colour around, you, you sort of, it's not controllable. It's not controllable in as far as, um, you know, you can pick and choose where it's going to go. So I've cleaned off the blue and now I'm going to colour with the green. And I, I don't know how else to, ex to explain this. I mean, you really need to sort of have a go at this to, to sort of... I don't know if I can get up a bit closer. Let me see if I can. And you'll be able to see that it just spreads the colour around beautifully. And you don't really have to um, work very hard at it at all. It doesn't matter if you go over the lines because this is a really sketchy um, drawing. Right, so I'm going to clean that off now and I'll show you how I got that yellow background. Now, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know how it would end up when I did it, but I kind of liked it. So I used the Daffodil uh, Delight and I just basically scribbled in any of those little spots that had a white background. And I'll hold this up because I wasn't even particular with that. Now, I don't know if you can see that. But that's all I did. Then I got the blender pen and I just sort of smoothed that out. I'll just make sure there's no green. So I've just smoothed that out and sort of spread it around. Now, it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's got a sketchy feel about it, so yeah, so there you go. And then I just got the uh, Dark Daffodil Delight, the blend, and with the bullet end, and you can see it's the bullet end because of this small thin line, the brush end or the thicker end has a thick line. So yeah, and I just basically did this. I just did random dots. I just felt that it took some of that whiteness away, that um, whiteness away from the background and just gave it a little bit more interest. Done. So that was that was quite quick and that was actually quite relaxing as well. Um, and again, th those two look a bit darker than the rest of them, but they will dry. That's the fluid in the... Um, blender pen. So now the next thing I did was I took a piece of uh, the Knight of Navy and I have embossed it. Now this is one of the 3D embossing folders. Now they're quite thick. This is in the annual catalogue. Um, you do get two in a packet. Um, just trying to think what I did with the other one. Is that it? Yep, that's it. These are called the Elegant Eucalyptus and um, I don't know if you can see that that beautiful design on that. That's like a, a spray on that one. And this one is like you can either have it coming down or you can either have it coming up. Now, I have I think I've got an example of the... Um, all I did there was embossed it and then used our blender pens... Uh, sorry, our blender brushes, and I've just rubbed over that with some ink uh, just to increase that. But it's beautiful, and you get both of those in the one uh, set. So, yeah, that's a bonus card for you. Right. So what I did was I just embossed that little piece, and now I don't know what I've done with it. As I said, if you could see this desk, ah, oh, there we go. You wouldn't be at all surprised. Okay, so I've got our coloured piece. I've got our embossed piece. Um, our card base is a standard card base, but it's a tent fold opening and it's in the Knight of Navy. Now I've teamed it up with Daffodil Delight. Um, I just think that they just complement each other so well. Um, 
they're both um, primary colors so yeah it's going to be a very small border border on there now this is the die now what I did was because I'm using this matte piece I've stamped this on here I've stamped it and then I've cut it out again nobody will know except you and me um, so that's it I've stamped it I've cut it out that's the die um, this is the set again it's the charming sentiments and you've got uh, 17 different sentiments there obviously some will go inside the card um, and the dies are called sentiment silhouette dies and there's a whopping 30 dies in this set and I've used some of them uh, there's some candles there's some um, other things um, some little sunbursts and flowers stars hearts and things like that but it cuts around these like they've been fussy cut now I'm going to show you that right this second how good is that how good does that look it looks like I've spent 10 minutes cutting that out I hate fussy cutting I'm not very good at it and um, this just makes it so easy so we're going to assemble this card as well now so again a tent fold uh, card we're going to glue that on there. I, I haven't worked out how I'm going to assemble this correctly, properly yet, but in my head, this is what it looks like, okay? And I also, from the, um, what was it called? Sun prints, sun, no, nature's prints. I used the flower, this single flower here, it looked most like those flowers. And it also has a die set that uh, will complement that. And it is called Nature's Prints Dies. So they're the stamps and they're the dies. So I've, I've used a combination of things um, because they kind of matched. Okay, so here's, here's what I did. I stamped them on a scrap and then I coloured it. Now I stamped a few in case I messed up, <laughs> which is quite likely. Um, <laughs> and then I cut it out. So I can keep this in the stamp set. Next time I want some flowers, I've already got some uh, ready to cut and to colour it, etc. So um, this is how I saw this card coming together. Um, I was going to use this Baker's Twine again and the white um what's it called seam binding so we'll just see how we go okay so let's have a look i think i had it like that do i want it like that yes i think i do okay so let's start assembling this so we'll put some of this around here And then I'll put the rest of it on here. Yeah, you don't need a lot of this. Like some demonstrators literally use like a quarter of an inch, if that. And the, the thing is, it's like it's dry straight away. You don't have to wait for it to dry. But there's no slippage. So you really need to... Um, get the knack of putting this down. Now what I do is I hold one side up, I hold one side up, I get the other two or well, the other three sides. Now what I'm looking for here is to make this border and this border and this border all the same and run this down straight and I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And again, there's like no sticky, excess sticky sticking out of there. Right. So now, that's going to go on the front. Before I do that though, I want to just lay this down and just see how I'm going to do this. Yep, okay. I think I'll do that there like that and we'll get some of this down the bottom here okay 
done. So I'll just turn that over, get my stamp and seal, put some down here, put some down there, figure out where I'm going to put this. Now there's enough white to uh, incorporate the white ribbon. So let's have a look. That down like that and I think we'll just do exactly the same again this time I'm using the starry sky um, Baker's twine now it's uh, one of the new 2022 to 24 um, in colors but it goes really well with the night of navy that's why I chose it excuse me, because I didn't have any Knight of Navy um, ribbon. So putting the, rib the ribbon on there just sort of gives it a bit more uh, quantity. So I'm just going to do the same thing, just wrap that around a few times and stick it down. Okay, chop that. Just make sure it gets into that adhesive. Now you don't want to pull that too tight because it'll end up bowing your card like that. So yeah, just make sure you've got the just the right amount of pressure on that. And we'll do exactly the same thing. That bow was quite successful. So hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. So we'll get that much and we'll get that much of that. I'm actually quite surprised that that bow did turn out um, <laughs> because I really did put no thought whatsoever into that. <laughs> now, what I find when I'm doing these these um, bows is they sort of uh, they turn up turn out upside down. So, see, I put that through there, and then invariably turning it upside down is the way to go. Anyway, you'll find your way. You may not like to do the rapid -E ones. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've all got our own way of making bows. But there you go. There's some done now. Just cut that off there. And that's going to go on our card base like that. But again, I'm going to glue that because, yeah, there's a bit of... Um, uh, thickness there with the ribbon and the just spilt glue all over myself. I wore my new cardigan today that one of my friends gave me. It's beautiful. It's so soft. It's like the old-fashioned Angora. Um, it's beautiful. Um, not really a pink person, but it's kind of like a peachy pink, so that's fine. That's perfectly acceptable to me. Um, so again, I'm going to glue that on there. I've checked that it's up the right way. And, oh, a bit of glue. So we'll just mop that up. Okay, that looks okay to me. And now we have our beautiful embossed bit. I don't think there's an up or a down when there's only a little bit of it. But I think that looks good. So that's going to go on there from edge to edge. Actually, I might just snip a little bit off that because um, I don't want it to be sort of too far over the edge. So I'll just take a little smidge off. That should be plenty. Okay. Yep, that's a bit better. So that's that's how I planned that to go like that. This is going to be on there. And we're going to tuck that flower in there somehow. So what we'll do is we'll get this all sorted first. And I was kind of thinking of just 
I don't know whether I want it like that or how I want it. And this is the bit where you get to play around with it. Um, back in the olden days when Don Burke had a gardening show, he would say, put and look before you plant them. So it's always been a good adage for me to put and look before you glue it all down. So I think we'll just have that popping out of the, of the back of that. And then we might pop that up. Or we might pop this whole bit up. I might even tuck it so that it sort of covers that up a bit. Yeah, quite like that. Okay, we'll just pop a bit of glue on that. Pop a bit of glue there. And... Have that going like that, I think. That looks good. And we might pop a little bit of glue under there, just to give it a bit of stability. There we go. Oops. As I said, I just knocked something off my desk. Well, it wouldn't matter. Yep. And I think we might pop that up. So we'll pop these up here. We might put one there. Oops, I hope I'm in camera. Gosh, I'm out of practice, guys. I'm, I haven't made a video for about two or three weeks. And I'm a little bit out of practice. Okay, now I've put what seems to be a lot on there. But the reason behind that is this is uh, not flat. Now, if you're really worried about something like that, this is another little trick that you can actually um, do. Once you take the um, backing off, oh, useless fingernails. Um, once you take the backing off these, you can then pop a little bit of glue, just a little dot in the middle. Now, the Self-adhesive part will initially stick that down, but the glue will actually soak it right in. So we'll just have a look how I want that to be. Okay, so I'm just going to do it straight, and I'm going to do it in the middle, like that. Now, does that look straight? It looks pretty good to me, although I think it's too far over this way. So we might just move that up just a smidge. Oh, this is where, look, that's crazy. Now that's too far over that side. Okay, stop. That's going right there. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And then I can glue this straight down. Now there is more flat. It's flatter on this debossed side. It's raised on this side, so if I was to turn it and put it this way, I'd have to make sure I got glue on those raised edges. But this is fine. This is easier to stick down because um, the bigger surface area is actually uh, the flat area. So, yep, we'll pop this down and we'll pop it about there. And pardon my head if I just bump the camera. We'll just put that around about there. Now, this has also got the um, Daffodil Delight in it. So we can use those uh, gems again if, if we wanted to. Um, in just a couple of those flowers. So I might do that. We've got to put our bows still on there. I might actually just do one. I might do a medium one and just do it in this flower, just to give that a bit of um, attention. Yeah, I think that looks nice. And we'll just put our bow on, again, with the glue dots. Um, just make sure you've got the right, which side is the nicer side. 
I think that side looks nicer than not. And we'll just pop that in the glue dot. Now see, as I pull this, that ribbon just moves around and just keeps the glue dots clean. Um, so they're not collecting things in their travels. <laughs> Don't know how many times I've stuck things to other things with glue dots. So this bow, I'm just going to put it on here. I might just put it up a little bit above that. And if that feels a little bit insecure, you can always just cut off a dot. Now, the dot is there. And put that underneath the ribbon. Press it down. Take it off. And now the ribbon that's underneath is secured as well. And there are two cards. And they're faux watercolour. Um, what I'm calling faux watercolour. They're the same, but they're kind of not. Um, I'll just get all this rubbish out of the way. My desk always seems to be a disaster area shortly after creating something. So, online store, ignore that host code. Um, look in my online store for the um, new one. I'm so sorry I'm a little bit disorganised. Keep your eye out for these beautiful embossed... And they're 3D. They're quite 3D. Um, there's quite a lot of dimension there. And that, that just looks so lovely. Um, I hope you can see that. Um, and this beautiful striking black and white paper that um, I can make this match any colour of my inks or papers that I want. And uh, by doing a background on that, I've just made that a little bit more uh, substantial. This one here is more subdued with the white background. But um, yeah, I hope uh, you might give that a go and I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.